Can we start with um, injury news? You had some senior lads on the bench the other night. That must have been a, a bit of a novelty. Yeah, we only just about managed to make it though. There was a, a the motorway got shut on the way in, and we had five players stuck. So thankfully they managed to get here for seven o'clock. Otherwise, it would have been another calamity. And uh, and what's been just difficult getting your players out onto the pitch, but great to get them back. And all three players a big part in the 23 game yesterday, which is very, very good for us. Um, a good win against Wrexham. So, yeah, the more we can get back, the, the healthier we'll feel. Uh, and it gives the players who are around them a bit of confidence knowing that people are coming back. Should we start believing that this injury list is beginning to show signs of getting better then? I don't know, I just looked at Harvey there, he looks a bit peaky, so I don't know. Yeah. The thing is, you, you can be moaning your luck or just get on with what you've got, and that's probably the best way now. So it's better off not talking about injuries and just carrying on and just seeing what we can get. I'm trying to build on performances, so I've been disappointed with it at home this season. And last, on Tuesday, was the first time we've actually pinned someone in to the Clayton end. When we kick into the Clayton end, we normally keep teams pinned in for big periods, and we did during the night. So that's pleasing. And that, I think, is a step in the right direction. We've got to carry on that Saturday. Does it leave you quite flat when, when you come away after doing that and not finding the net? Yeah, of course it does. Um, and that's been a concern that we haven't scored it anywhere near enough goals. You know, our goal return has been the worst I've ever had since I've been here, I think. But, you know, there's, there's quite a few reasons for that as well. Um, we're not daft, we're not, we don't bury our heads in the sand. But we've got to keep going and we've got to keep trying to make chances. We've got to, have, we've got to get into shooting positions in the first place, then we've got a better return for our shooting positions. And I think that's possibly let us down all season, but the numbers were up back to where we were at the start of the season, when we were scoring goals at the start of the season. The numbers of shots were back up to over 20. And then there's too many times when we've been having nine shots in. If you have nine shots in a game and only three on target, you're going to struggle to score one. So we've got to, we've got to up the, the raffle tickets, basically. Got to buy more raffle tickets. And got to get into better positions. Got to f teams have got to feel the force and we're pinning them in to our home fans. And, you know, we've... We've got to try and build on that performance on Tuesday by putting the ball in the net. And if we put the ball in the net, that would be a very, very acceptable performance. Do you feel like you've got competition to play up there at the moment? Yeah, I think we have now. You know, young Nathan looked lively. I know he only came on for 10 minutes. But the times he's been on, he's looked lively. Um, Sean Wall is always a constant threat. He just needs a little bit of luck, Sean. Uh, just needs a ball to bounce in of him, he's been so unlucky on numerous occasions. Aaron showed what he could do during the night, very good. Rizzo was a constant threat all night. Sean was getting a bit more forward, and it's an amazing thing. I've been, been telling him to get as far forward as possible, and then he, he gets caught about seven inches offside to, to stop us getting an equaliser, which is frustrating, really. But you just got to keep going. and. I know that we've got players who've got big hearts. Um, and you look at the, the the three at the back who've played the last two games and they've given it all, you know what I mean? So you can't you can't knock them. The lads in midfield run themselves into the ground. So, you know, Tommy coming on and having a bit more of a than a cameo. Yeah, I think um, I think going forward we, we've just got to try and Keep working hard and hopefully your luck changes. Is the free agents market at all an interest at this stage? Yeah, it could well be. We we, we did have a an interest in, in one international player last week, but then he, he went somewhere else. Um, but you know you can't you can't pin your hopes on that. Uh, and the players that we've got here, I just think we can rally them round and, and get a tune. And if we get one in. Or maybe two in who are free, but we think they can do a job to the end of the season. Well, why not? Does it all depend on fitness as much as anything else? You can't wait for them I for weeks, can you? Does. I think a lot of it does. And you want players who've been playing, so we'll see. Yeah. Um, your spirits seem up, John. You, you don't seem like you're, you're letting the, the form affect you right now, do you? Well, 
the thing is, is that I get more I get more disappointed when I know that we've we've dropped massively below the level that we can achieve, i.e. the Lincoln game. Um, and then when I see the players give their all, and, and when I see us getting back to the attack and threat that we did, all right, and people might say, well, you only had five shots and two of them were P-rollers or whatever, but we kept the ball in there last third for a long period during the night against a team who were flowing with confidence, who were sweeping everyone aside. And we've probably given them the toughest game they've had this month um, or the last four weeks. So that bodes well. We know we can do it again. And we've got players who are desperate to get out of the situation that we're in. How much is it your responsibility to be bright and bubbly around this place, to, to create that atmosphere that the lads want to come to work every day? I think day? it's essential. Um, you know, they've got, to, they've got to be led by someone who's positive. And if I don't believe, how can I make them believe? Um, and I believe we've got players here who will fight tooth and nail to get us out of the situation that we are, or that we're in. And, you know, two wins changes everything. You've only got to look at Morecambe for that. You know, Morecambe won four home games on the spin, catapulted out of the, out of the drop zone. So we've got to try and think that that's the same thing we can do. You've had some terrific teams and terrific players down the years here, John. Um, so when I say how much does team spirit get you, that doesn't mean you haven't had ability down the years here. But what can it do to create the right atmosphere here? Can it be the difference between being in one division and being in another? 100% it can. But if you're just building yourself on teams, but you've got no chance. You've got to have a partner play. You've got to have players who can play certain roles. Um, you've got to be focused on how you're going to pass the ball, how you're going to play, how you're going to defend, um, and how you're going to try and make more chances. And if you're just going to do this gun go spirit, I'm just going to come on. You know that'll only get you so far. So we have got talented players here. And we've got to try and get them talented players playing to the, their maximum ability. And there's a range of ages in this talent, isn't there, right now? There's some perhaps towards the tail end and there's some who perhaps wouldn't even thought they'd have started their careers yet. Yeah, and, you know, that's, you know, possibly the attraction of starting your career at Atkinson. That you, you know, if you're good enough, you're going to get a chance. Um, and we do try and push them forward. And, you know, there's been... Many a success story of players kick-starting their career by coming to Atkinson Stanley and hopefully there'll be many more in the future. I was talking to the, the academy boss the other day, John, and, and Dan Julie sees a lot of the games and, and they were they're talking about Aaron Pickles and maybe shades of Ross Sykes and, and, the, and the story that he had here. Do you see those? Well, it, there'll always be the comparisons because they're both tall, they both played very young. Um, and both come through, the, obviously, the, the, the Youth Academy. Uh, I do. I do see similarities. I think possibly Aaron's at a little bit more advanced days than what Ross was at 17. I think he's 17. Um, and then Ross went on to... He accelerated his progress within a year. He was. He went from being a bit part player who was going out on loan to being probably our best centre-half. Um, and hopefully Aaron can do exactly the same thing. Do you just need games now? I think so, but you know, yeah, you've got to be mindful that you don't overexpose him. Um, and there's still things in the game that he, he shows his, his youth. Uh, but there's also really positive things, and you know, there's one of your difficult problems of exposing someone that young, if they do well, is keeping hold of them. You, know, you have a 17 year old player plays and handles himself in League One, the bigger clubs will think, well, we can develop that and he can handle himself in the Premiership. So, and they've got the time to spend four, four or five years developing him. Um, and you've only got to look at, you know, the, the transition John Stone's made from Barnsley to, to Everton to Man City to, to England. So, um, that, that, that pathway you just got to be mindful that people won't be looking at that and thinking, well, he could be another one of them. Do you think Michael Nottingham might have a, a good influence on him when he's fit fully to, I to just play with? Michael Nottingham's a bit old to be making that transition now to <laughs> Premiership football. Yeah, Michael will. Seamus does. Seamus will. 
Um, and Harvey's played a lot of games. So, you know, there, there's people to learn from. And, you know, we'd like to think that we can give them some advice as well. You know, myself, Jimmy, John Zoo, Jeb Brannan, Andy Gray, you know, they've all been involved, played a lot of football. So, you know, it, it's good that you've got people around and we can give them advice and, and keep his feet on the ground, which he is a very, very level headed lad. It'll be all about you getting results, but how quickly these days are you wanting to know how everybody else is getting on after the game? Does it accelerate now, or have you always been the way that you want to know? Be lying if I didn't say I didn't check at half time. I've stopped checking during the games, so I haven't got to that stage yet. Um, you might have to at some point. Yeah, you will, but the best way of getting out of trouble is getting yourself out of trouble, not relying on anybody else. Um, and we've got a, we've got a get our heads down and focus on what we do and let other people take care of themselves. Um, and then anything you do after that, can be, or anything that happens after the game, can be a bonus rather than getting you out of jail. I think you've talked about points tallies before. The last few years have been quite strange, really. 40 would have done it last year. The year Berry dropped out of League One, I think 32 would have done. It's not going to be that this year, but have you any thoughts on what it would be? I don't think 40 will be enough this year, that's for sure. I think you've got to be touching the 50 mark. And I think, every, I think everybody who's in that bottom seven, I think, in the same. So, you know, still a lot of points to play for, and we've got to have a better finish to the season than we had in the mid-season or the start of the season. And history tells you that we, don't, we normally do finish season strong. Is there any sign of that consistency to reach 50 for for teams that are in the bottom four right now? John, 50 probably seems a long way away, doesn't it? It does, and you know, there's there's big teams that you're playing. But, you know, if you're not up for the challenge, don't do it. You know, withdraw from the league if you, if you think this league's too tough for you. We've worked our socks off to get into this league. So, we're not going to throw the opportunity away. Uh, like we have, we've done for the last four years to keep staying in the league. Um, and, you know, my brother made a great point the season after we got promoted. He said the prize for, for winning League Two was League One football. And everybody was enthralled by that. And, national news and all that palaver and the prize for finishing fifth from bottom is also League 2 football it doesn't enthrall you as uh, League 1 football it doesn't enthrall you as much but it's still you're still winning the same prize and it's probably harder to win that prize than it is to win the League 2 prize so you just don't get a shiny cup to run around at the end of it but you know we, we know that the task ahead is going to be difficult but we're up for it. All the staff are up for it. All the players are up for it. Your ambition, talking to you over 20 years, John, is always we want to win the league, whatever league we're in. But if you did finish fifth bottom this time round, I don't think you'd be celebrating from the rooftops exactly, but how be big an achievement? Oh, it'd, be, it'd be a massive achievement. With, with the adversity that we've gone through this season, you know, it's akin to the, the adversity we went through all them years ago when we had the financial problems. And it's, it's that forbearing. Um, no... Every team suffers with injuries. No one has been on the graph that we've been on. But that's it. And so, instead of worrying about it, worry about what you've got to, to do next. Worry about the next task in hand, which is playing a game of football in Shrewsbury, which, as I mentioned a couple of weeks ago, we're all blessed to be doing this job. You know, we could be doing uh, thousands of other jobs that aren't as enjoyable as this. And OK, they mightn't feel enjoyable. It mightn't feel an enjoyable job when you're getting beat or when things are going against you. But you're involved in professional football. It'd be a cue, like, as I said, do the, do the week down the M65, for my job, for players' jobs. So embrace it, enjoy it. Don't, don't shy away from it. And because things get a little bit tricky now and again, you uh, you want to curl up in the ball, let's, let's go out, let's stick our chest out and, and enjoy that we're playing in League One. And if you think about the fans who've been with us from, from day one, when me and Jimmy came, I said to you when we're playing Belper that you're going to be playing Sheffield's Wednesday and being disappointed when you get beat. It's it's dream dream academy stuff. So we're not blase that we've we've got a big task ahead of us, but we know how hard we work to get here and we know how hard we're going to work to try and stay. It's the first time I've heard you can compare what it'd be like to stay in this division and, and what it was like years ago when there was so many problems that you had to deal with, not even thinking about the football, John. 
Does it feel really to, to that level? Well, it is. It's, it's, it's a tough task because you, the, the inequality in League One is more than any other division. Any other, I mean, you could argue maybe the Premiership. But they're still getting hundreds of millions for TV rights. Um, the, the disparity in, in disposable income for your Ipswiches and your Sheffield Wednesdays and your Derby counties compared to ours, it's night and day. Um, and yet still, we believe we can perform and we give our best and we'll always give our best. How big this week for Accrington stand this season, would you suggest? Well, every week's going to be the same and I, I've said that to, in the past. You, you've just got to be careful that you don't bore yourself, bore the players. You're always trying to reinvent what you say to them because it just becomes background noise. But every game we play from now on the end of the season is going to be absolutely massive. You know, we've got a massive game coming up Saturday and then we've got a massive game coming up Wednesday. And then every game we play then will, will have its own uh, pitfalls and be difficult. But at the end of the day, you're getting three points and you can only take each game as they come with the three points. And all you can focus on is trying to get them doing as best you can to take them three points. If you don't get the three, take a one. Um, and our mentality is we've just got to get enough points to get over the line and don't worry about anybody else, worry about ourselves. You played an informed team on Tuesday, Shrewsbury's um, informed to say the least, aren't they? Yeah, they are, they're very good. Um, we're having a very good team, but most teams you play are going to have threats and we've got to try and get our threat going. And one of our big advantages at home is that our crowd get behind us they enable us to pin teams in, and hopefully we'll do that on, on, on um, Saturday. What have they got at Shrewsbury? I think they've won six out of seven, haven't they? Yeah, they've got good players who they play a, a, a good strategic game. Uh, they've got physical players who can hurt you. They've got good attackers. Um, and sometimes you get in the run, you don't know how you've got in the run, and then all of a sudden you go off that run. So if you, Shrewsbury are a classic case of... Um, a binge winning, really. You know, Shrewsbury went on a spell where they lost five on a spin, I think. And then, as quickly as that came and went, they couldn't stop winning. And I think a lot of teams go into that situation in, it, in our league. I'd love to have a binge. And you never know. You never know where, you ne where the next one comes from, but you can get on it, that's for sure.